The first of those groups was a group that they're the earliest. There's no group before them. And they're called the what? Al-Khawarij. They were the first group. The Khawarij came out, the first of their, their appearance was at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, while he was alive. But they didn't have all this movement and strength and power only after what? Only at the time of Ali ibn Abi Talib, they became very strong. And we're going to talk about it later. The Prophet وسلم, he was in a place called Ji'irrana. It's between Mecca and Medina. Ji'irrana, that's where he was, alayhi salatu wasalam. And the Prophet وسلم, was given the spoils of war of the Battle of Hunayn. He was given spoils of war out. You all know what a spoils of war, right? When the Prophet was giving it out, alayhi salatu wasalam, the people of Ansar, they didn't get anything from it. They what? They didn't receive anything from the spoils of war. Nothing was given to them. The Prophet sallallahu gave it to um, Abbas ibn um, Al-Fazari and Abbas ibn Mardas and others he gave it to them. And Aqra ibn Habis and others. The Prophet gave them each hundred camels. Not one, not two, not three, hundred camels. Hatta Ikrima and Abu Sufyan and all of them, they were given each hundred camels. Hundred, 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 hundred. And Ansar, who is the biggest number? Who is the biggest number when the battles happen? Who suffers the most casualties? Ansar. Ansar, they have more casualties than anyone else because they had more number. And because a lot of the times the people would try to wage war to Medina and the people of Ansar were the people of Medina. That's why I remember when you read the seerah, you have to remember this. The battle of Badr, when the Messenger of Allah he left Medina. Why did he sit down and say to the Sahabas, what shall I do? And every time the people of Muhajirina spoke, and they said, Ya Rasulullah, we will defend you and we will be with you and we will make sure and we will make sure the Prophet he wouldn't, he wouldn't listen to them. And so they, Sa'ad ibn Ubadah said, Ya Rasulullah, it's like you want us people of Ansar to talk. And he said, yes, yes, yes. I want you Ansari people to talk. And then they said, Ya Rasulullah, we're not going to forsake you. We promise you that. Why did he want to hear Ansar and not Muhajirin? Because remember, Ansar, they gave the Prophet ﷺ a pledge of allegiance, bay'ah, right? And the bay'ah was what? That we will protect you, we will care for you in Medina. But now he's not in Medina. He's outside Medina. So are there, does the contract still apply here or does it not apply here? They reassured him, don't worry, we're here for you, O Messenger of Allah. We're not going to say to you what the... The Jews said to Musa, Idhab anta wa rabbuka faqatila inna ha huna qa'idun. What we're going to say to you is, Idhab anta wa rabbuka faqatila inna ma'akuma muqatilun. Go and fight you, your Lord, we're going to fight with you. That's what they said to him. So here, I digress so much that I forgot the point I was going to say. Aj'arrana, na'am, the spoils of war. So the Prophet, alayhi salatu was salam, he gave Ansar nothing. Ansar now, some of them spoke. They said, this is not fair. We were the ones that were fighting. Why didn't we not get anything? The news reached the Prophet ﷺ. He said, call them together, Ansar. I want to talk to them. He spoke to them. He said, what is this that has reached me regarding you guys? They said, Ya Rasulullah, our elders never said this. It's the young ones. It's always the young ones that make problems, huh? It's our young ones, the youth, full of energy and zeal. They said these statements. It didn't come from our wise elder ones. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's a long hadith, but the part I want from it is, He, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ala tarbawna, are you not happy? 
that you all go back, everybody goes back with their camels and their riding beast and their dunya, all of that. وَتَرْجِعُونَ بِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ And you guys go back home with the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم with you. The narration mentioned that Ansar became so emotional from the Prophet's speech that they started to cry so much until their beards became full with tears. And they said, Ya Rasool Allah, we, we want you with us. Come please. Then the Messenger said this very famous statement that the people are the outer garment and Ansar are the inner garment, the closest to the body. Wallahi, if Ansar take a valley, I will take the valley of Ansar. Except that I am a man from the people of the Muhajirin. When the Prophet finished that khutbah, a man stood up. He was bold, eyes were in, very loud. And he spoke loud. Bedouin man from the people of Bani Tamim. And he said, Ya Muhammad. He didn't say, Ya Rasulullah. He said, I'dil fa inna kalam ta'dil. Be just. You're not just. A'udhu billah. How can you say to the Prophet of Allah that you're not just? A man thought to himself that his piety and his righteousness is even more than the Prophet ﷺ. Are we all together, brothers? He said, "I'dil fa inna kalam ta'dil." And the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "How am I not just?" When the Lord above, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He trusted me with the revelation to pass it to you all. You won't trust me? Then the Messenger said to the Sahabas that were there, min هذا الرجل. This man, this view that he holds and this opinions that he has, there's going to come from this an ideology. These people, يَقْتُلُونَ أَهْلِ الْإِسْلَامِ They will kill the Muslims. وَيَدَعُونَ أَهْلِ الْأَوْثَانِ They leave the disbelievers. They so the Prophet gave a description. And the description that he gave was so harsh against them that he said, لَإِنْ أَدَرَكْتُهُمْ If I meet these people, لَأَقْتُلَنَّهُمْ قَتْلَ عَاد If I ever see these people and they come out while I'm alive, I will destroy them like, I destroy, like Allah destroyed the people of Ad. The people of Ad, Allah said about them, huh? فَهَلْ تَرَى لَهُمْ مِنْ بَاقِيَ When Allah destroyed them, Allah said, do you know any one of them that's remaining? Meaning, I will annihilate them. I will not let any of them remain. Are we all together, brothers? That group, with their force, and their power, it came out at the time of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. At the time of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, just that man came out, the Prophet already told that this man is going to give this ideology to other people and it's going to carry on and carry on and carry on. Huh? Are we all together brothers? And this group could not come out at the time of Abu Bakr and definitely not the time of Umar. But, and also they didn't come fully at the time of Uthman, even though they were the ones who killed him. But they came with force, with an army, with power, with leadership, in, at the time of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And we all together brothers. And they left Ali ibn Abi Talib who was Situated in Kufa. Ali was in what? Iraq, Kufa. That's where he was. Khilafa was. What they did was they went out to a place called Harura. They resided there. They said that these are all Kuffar. They're not Muslims. They've abandoned the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are the ones who only believe in Allah. We are the only ones that are holding on to the religion of Allah. All of these people are Kuffar. Murtaduna and deen al-Islam. Are we all together? Who are they saying that about? 
Ibn Ammi Rasulillah. So Abdullah ibn Abbas said, listen, I need to, he went to Ali, he said, Ali, give me permission to go and debate these people. And Imam Hakim mentions this in his Mustadrak. He said, please give me permission to go and debate with them. Abdullah ibn Abbas, he dressed nicely, wore a nice garment, and he went to them in where they were. When he came to them, he saw a people whose foreheads were like the knees of the camel. What does that mean? The excessive prayer that they were praying, the sujood that they were doing, their foreheads keeping on the ground for so long, their eyes were sunk in so deep, they, never, they rarely slept. They were siyam and qiyam. The Prophet even described them, يَحْقِرُ أَحَدُكُمْ صَلَاتُهُ مَعَ صَلَاتِهِمْ وَصِيَامُكُمْ مَعَ صِيَامِهِمْ that one of you will belittle your fasting and your prayer when you look at their ones, the way they do it. As soon as they saw Abdullah ibn Abbas, they said, this man is from Quraysh. <coughs> look at this, and I want you to remember this. Abdullah ibn Abbas, when he came and he walked towards them, he looked around and he said to them, ليس معكم أحد من أصحاب رسول الله. Underline that point. None of the companions are with you guys. Why? Why do you guys not have the companions with you? صح? Not one of the companions is in your midst. The people who heard directly from the Prophet. Not one of them is with you. None of them were with them. He sat down and he said to them, before he spoke to them, they saw him wearing his garment and the way he was dressed, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, and they said that we don't want to talk to him. Don't talk. So they whispered to themselves, don't talk to him. Don't talk to him, Abbas. He is from the people that Allah said about in the Quran, مَا ضَرَبُوهُ لَكَ إِلَّا جَدَلًا بَلْ هُمْ قَوْمٌ خَصِيمُونَ That they're very argumentative. This is talking about Nadr ibn al-Harith and Kufar al-Quraysh. They took that verse that came down on the people of Kufr and they applied it on who? That's one of the qualities. These things I'm mentioning to you by the, these are characteristics of theirs. These are characteristics. They take ayatul nazalat, verses that came down on the Kufar and they apply it with its application and every of, everything of its form. They apply it on who? The Muslims. Abdullah ibn Abbas, Turjuman al Quran. You will know Abdullah ibn Abbas, the first thing that went into his mouth was the date that the Prophet chewed, alayhi salatu was salam. And it was put in his mouth. Are we all together, brothers? The Prophet chewed date and put it in his mouth. That was the first thing. His mom didn't even breastfeed him yet. She came running with him. And she said, here's my son. I haven't given him even breast milk yet. Give him uh, something. The first thing that went in his mouth was a date that was chewed by Nabiullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa On top of that, the Prophet said to him, Allahumma faqihu fi deen wa alimhu ta'wil. Oh Allah, give him Abbas the understanding of the religion and also the interpretation of the Quran. On the day of Arafah in Hajj, Abdullah ibn Abbas stood up. Sa'id ibn Jubair and Tawus ibn Kaysan and Abu Ali at al-Rayahi, they were there sitting. They said, Wallahi, he did the tafsir of the Quran that day, ibn Abbas. He took ayat and he explained it. Wallahi, law sami'ahu al-Rum wa turk La'aslamu kulluhum. If the Romans and the Persians and some of those, they had the, inter the tafsir he just gave, they would have taken Islam. The knowledge that was gushing from him. Are we all together? That's why Mujahid ibn Jabrin he said, Aradtu al mushafa ala ibn Abbas in thalatu aradat. Mujahid ibn Jabrin, he's a student of Ibn Abbas. He said, I opened the mushaf, I grabbed the mushaf, I started from Surah Al Fatiha. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. What does that mean, Ibn Abbas? Good. 
Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. What does it mean? Every ayah he explained it to me. Three times that we finished the Quran. One, two, three. Are we all together, brothers? Abu Jawza, he said, Jawartu ibn Abbas ithnatay ashara sala. I was the neighbor of Ibn Abbas for 12 years. I took the entire Quran from him. I was just his neighbor and I benefited the whole Quran from him. Even that though he was only 15, some said 13, hatta, some even said 17, when the Prophet passed away. I will together, brothers. Very young. Ibn Abbas, and I'm mentioning all of this, brothers, because of, we have to understand before the discussion opens with the Khawarij, which man this is. Ibn Abbas, one day he went to Umar ibn Khattab. He carried a bucket of water that Umar ibn Khattab needed the toilet. So he took the bucket for him and back in those days the toilet was outside in the open. So he got the water ready for him, he put it there for him and he walked away, waited for Umar to finish his call of nature and he came and then he took the bucket after Umar used it and he poured more water in it for him and then he started to wash the hands of Umar for him. And Umar then would, would do with all. He thought this is my best opportunity he said, Umar, I have a question I want to ask you. For one year, I was avoiding you. I couldn't ask you because you're somebody I just, I'm just nervous around. Oh, Umar. He said, I want to know the tafsir of the ayah, in tatuba ila Allahi faqad sagat qulubukuma. Who is this ayah talking about the two people? Umar said, Wa ajabal laka ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas, fascination and wonder be for you. He was shocked. You don't know these two people? Ibn Abbas, he didn't even reach the age of 20. Umar was like, you don't know this? Inna Hafsa wa Aisha. This ayah is talking about his daughter Hafsa and Aisha. And he mentions the story when the Prophet boycotted his wives for 29 nights. And that's a story for another time. Yeah, But this shows you that Umar saw Ibn Abbas as an alim, a person of great knowledge. And that's the case. He brought Ibn Abbas as a youth. It reminds me of the line of poetry. How many people are young in age? But the senior people might need them in knowledge. Young, but senior people need them. Because of what they carry, the, the knowledge they carry on their shoulders. Ibn Abbas was one of them. Ibn Abbas used to sit in the Majlis Ashura, the people who make the decisions for the Muslims, the Khilaf of Umar, the decision makers. Ibn Abbas was one of them. As a youth who didn't even reach the age of 20. He was a teenager when he was making decisions for the Muslims. Abdurrahman Rahman Auf said to Umar one day, Why are you bringing Ibn Abbas in this gathering? He, he's, he's the same age as our son. Like he's a young kid. And we're all big men sitting here making decisions for the ummah. And there's a young boy sitting. <coughs> Umar said, I'll show you why. He sat down and looked at all the sahaba. He said, Surah. Surah al Nasr. He said, what do you guys understand from the surah? They all gave their interpretation. Each one of them said, what we take from the ayah is, Allah is commanding the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to exalt him and to ask forgiveness from him and etc. They get the tafsir. He said, good, good. All of you are right. But Ibn Abbas, I want to know, what, you, what did you get from the ayah, surah? And he said, the surah was to show qurbu mawti Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa the Prophet is about to die. He didn't just look at the words. He looked at the deep meaning more than just the surface level. And then Umar smiled and he said, I also understood from this surah what you've understood from it. That's why I chose him to sit with us. Are we all together, brothers? So this is an encouragement from you, young brothers, to not waste your time. 
Time is the most, most important thing, brothers. The money that you have today, if you lose it, you might get it back again. The time you lose, you will never get it back. You will never what? Inshallah. The time that you lose, my brothers and sisters, you're not going to get that back. And the day of judgment, brothers, wallahi, you'll be asked about your time. The hadith of Abi Barzat al Aslami, La Tazulu Qadabai Abdin Yom al Qiyamati Hatta Yust Allah an Arbain. A person's legs will not move from its position until he answers four questions. From the four questions is what? An Umrihi fi ma afna. How did you spend your time? Wa an Shababihi fi ma abla. As a youth, what did you do with your time? How did you spend your life? Are we all together? أَوَلَمْ نُعَمِّرْكُمْ مَا يَتَذَكَّرُ فِيهِ مَنْ تَذَكَّرْ وَجَاءَكُمُ النَّذِيرُ Has Allah not given you enough time to live, to come back to your sense and to rectify your situation? So brothers, don't waste your time. We're at a time when social media and all of these things are subhanAllah rampant. And then, mashallah, flicking through one. Okay, mashallah, I want to watch more. Was it TikTok? TikTok. And uh, Snapchat and Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, all these things. And some more is going to come. You waste your life, your, your most valuable thing. Don't. And what made Ibn Abbas unique is that he used to travel to seek knowledge. When he came to the Sahabi's house and he slept in front of the door and the wind was blowing from all directions and he covered his face and he lied there. Because he came at night and he didn't want to knock on his door. But there was a hadith he heard that this man heard from the Prophet that he wanted to take from him. So he waited for him for Fajr. When the Sahabi came out and he saw Ibn Abbas sleeping. Imagine the Prophet's cousin is sleeping in front of your house. So he said, why are you sleeping in front of my house for? Why didn't you just tell me? I would have come to you wherever in the world you wanted me to come. And he said, no, al-ilmu yu'ta wa la yati. If you want knowledge, you should go to knowledge. 